Hey friends and welcome back to another video. I hope you enjoyed today's meal prep video where we're basically making around 16 to 18 freezer meals because I'm not the biggest fan of meal prep but I am a huge fan of food prep and also making things that we can put in our freezer if we have one. So I'm starting off by making my lasagna that I made last autumn as well. I think this was in my favourite autumn meals video so I will link the blog post to that in the description so you can have all the measurements completely set out for you. It's really easy though, we're going to start by making the red sauce, which is just some olive oil, although I used the oil from my sun-dried tomatoes just to give it a bit more of a flavour. And then also going to be throwing in the onions, which I was too lazy to chop, so we just threw those in a food processor. It makes meal prep so much quicker, just kind of bulk food prepping those uh, onions and garlic. Although I did actually chop these garlic, which I later regretted, because then I had to chop about 20 more, which was time-consuming. After we let them saute for a while we're going to add in the celery and the carrots. They also add just so much flavour to, to the dish. So we're just going to throw those in the food processor again because too lazy to chop them up and it just saves a lot of time especially if you're meal prepping a lot of food today. Then once that's all just chopped up we're going to add that in and fry that for about 10 minutes. Next we're going to be adding in the mushrooms. I like to chop these up quite small because they're supposed to be like mints but I also add in lentils and walnuts as well just to add some, some protein. So yeah, I added these to a food processor. Last time I think I used a blender which was a mistake. You want to use a food processor or you want to chop them up really small just with a knife. Then you add the mushrooms in and cook them down until a little bit of the liquid starts to kind of seep out of them. Seep's not a nice word is it? I don't know, but I can't think of another one. So then we add in the sun-dried tomatoes, the tomato paste, and the miso paste. The miso paste is definitely an essential because it's one of those things that adds in a lot more flavor to vegan food. And then we're adding in the soy sauce and the balsamic vinegar and giving that a nice, nice stir. I also add in some oregano this time. I don't think I did last time, but yeah, it just adds a nice bit of extra flavor. And then we're adding in those green lentils. And the tomatoes, obviously. I also added in some of the cherry tomatoes from the garden that really needed to be used up. I have now started to leave my tomatoes on my windowsill rather than putting them in the fridge and it really does make a huge difference to what they taste like. Okay, while that's cooking away for about an hour, I'm gonna make the white sauce. So we're gonna use some vegan butter, quite a lot of it actually. And then I'm only adding in soy milk, plain flour, and some nutritional yeast. I also decided to try a new vegan cheese this time. I know you guys know I'm not a big fan of vegan cheese, but I thought, just give it a go. Everyone always talks about apple woods being a kind of smoky flavor, and yeah, it was okay. Probably wouldn't use it again. But for those of you who do like vegan cheese, it, it could be a, a good thing. So yeah, we're just adding in the soy milk until all of the soy milk is used up because this does become quite thick later on. And then once that has got to a consistency that we're going to take off the heat, we'll add in the cheese and the nutritional yeast. These are just completely optional. It is a white sauce, so you don't actually need to put nutritional yeast in it, but it's just, it's just up to you. And basically now when the red sauce is done, we just start layering up. I think I made these layers just a little bit too thick, but it's really up to you depending on how much pasta you want, especially if you use fresh pasta. I'm just gonna be layering this up and then we'll throw it back in the oven for maybe about 40 minutes. A little tip that I picked up actually is if you use a pair of scissors to kind of cut the edges just very slightly, then you can get a much better fit for your lasagna slices. Revolutionary, I tell you. So I'm just using the remainder of the white sauce to go on top and then we're going to be adding the rest of that sort of smoked applewood cheese that I had. This one actually melts which is one of the reasons why I chose to try this one. But yeah it does add a smoky flavour that does run throughout the whole lasagna so if you don't like that then you, could, you just really don't need to use this at all. So when I came to deciding how many slices to do for this, I decided to sort of put it into a few different portion sizes. 
And also when I took it out of the oven, I left it for a while just so it would cool down properly and set. So it was much easier to actually take out of the dish and put into their separate meal prep dishes. So I think we ended up having maybe about six full portions, like quite big portions, and then two smaller portions for if I wasn't very hungry that day or if I just wanted to have, let's be honest, a lasagna snack and there was nothing else around. Once these are cooled down properly, I just put the lids on. You can see next to it one of the other things that we are meal prepping next. And yeah, then I just let these cool down properly until I put them in the freezer. So the next thing we're making is a chestnut and sage soup. We still got lots of variegated sage in the garden, so I wanted to use that up. And I'm coming around to the idea that sage is not synonymous with eating lamb, <laughs> because to me, sage would just taste like that, which was absolutely bizarre. But yeah, so for this recipe, we're gonna be adding some onion to quite a bit of olive oil into a pan. This is honestly one of the quickest soups. It's also quite sweet, naturally. So yeah, we don't add anything else in. I'm also adding some vegan butter to the olive oil and then we add in the onions and let them sweat for about 10, 10 minutes. And there we go with the garlic again. As I said, if you know what you're gonna be making for the whole day, you can prepare these ahead of time so you can chop up all the onions together and all the garlic together and just portion them out per meal that you're making. It makes things so much quicker. After we add the garlic we're also adding in the sage leaves. I added in I think about 10 to 12 but there will be a blog post in the description below. Then we're just adding in the chestnuts and the vegetable stock. The chestnuts are already peeled and cooked. I also then put it into a food processor, which was a mistake. Don't do this, because the water came out the sides. So I ended up using a really small Nutribullet that my parents had lying around. Not the best, if you have a bigger blender, that would definitely be better. And then just at the end, I'm adding in some soy cream. You can leave this out, and once you defrost your soup to actually make it, you could then add it in. Um, but I found that defrosting it like this was actually just completely fine. You just want to be aware of how much sugar is in the soy cream because it will make the soup a lot sweeter and it's just up to you, it depends on how much you want and how sweet you want it to be. I'm just reusing some glass jars that I have uh, that are freezer proof and microwave proof and then we'll let these cool down before putting them in the freezer as well. Okay, the last thing is a mushroom soup with dumplings that I have been showing you guys in a few other videos that you are hopefully quite excited about. This is my favorite autumn meal, honestly. I just, I thought it was really hard to make, which is why I haven't tried to make it before. Usually my mum makes it for me, which is such a childish thing, but it's one of those wonderful things that your parents make for you one time and you just think that it's too special to make yourself. But I got over that, so I put in some olive oil, some vegan butter and the onions and just put them on for about 10 minutes then we're going to be adding in other things like carrots and again some celery these are the base of most of the soups that i bake to be honest and most sort of rich tomato dishes as well throw those into a food processor as i said before again you can meal prep these earlier all together if you know you're going to be making multiple batches now because this is a mushroom soup we really i'm going really heavy on the mushrooms so after we put in all of the carrot and the celery just to cook away. We're gonna be concentrating on the mushrooms. We've got several different ones. We've got chestnut mushrooms, we've got portobello mushrooms, and we also have some porcini mushrooms. The porcini mushrooms give such a nice depth of flavor to the soup and make it just quite hearty and also not necessarily giving it a meat flavor, but it gives it a deeper flavor than, I don't know, some vegan dishes definitely don't get you there. One thing with porcini mushrooms though is if you do, when you do rehydrate them and you use a liquid, you need to make sure that you are straining it because it has a lot of grit and other random stuff in there that you just don't want. So make sure you strain it through at least a sieve, if not a muslin cloth as well. Okay, once those vegetables have done sauteing, we're gonna add in all of the mushrooms. All of the mushrooms, so many mushrooms. You might need a really big pot for this. I also added in quite a lot more mushrooms than perhaps was necessary just because I really Onto the dumplings. They are so easy. They are literally white flour, vegetable suet, cold water, 
and herbs. That's literally it. That is literally it. I can't believe how easy these are. I'm adding in parsley and dill. Chopping them up really small because I don't want big bits in my dumplings. In the meantime, we are going to be adding in the garlic, the porcini mushrooms, and then the porcini sort of strained hydrated liquid. We are also adding in quite a bit of vegetable stock as well, because after all, this is a soup. Now you don't have to blend any of this, but I did choose to blend about two cups worth just to give it a thicker soup feeling. Back to the dumplings. Once you've mixed in the suet and the plain flour, then you add in your herbs and you mix those in as well. You can also add in a pinch of salt here as well. Then we're adding cold water just a few tablespoons at a time, just until the dumplings come together. I use a knife because it's kind of like, it's just easier and less messy because it's quite a wet dough. And then that's literally it. You just work it into a dough, making sure you're adding water when you need it. And then you just pull them out into different sizes that you want. Mine weren't very consistent. I had some quite huge ones, quite medium ones, but that doesn't really matter. They all taste really good. And I was quite surprised at how well they actually froze and held up. With these though, I would definitely take them out the freezer the night before and put it in the fridge to let it thaw properly or take it out of the freezer and put it on your side table or whatever, your counter in the kitchen if you're going to have it for dinner because if you especially are make, making dumplings that are quite big, you want to give them time to completely thaw through. I'm adding in some of the extra herbs into the dish once the mushrooms have cooked through and then I'm just going to add in the dumplings. The dumplings take about 10 to 15 minutes. But again, there'll be a blog post linked in the description below that you can check out all of these things. Of course, I had to have some because it is one of my favorite meals. So I'm just portioning out one size for me, but if I didn't, this would have made six portions. I have about two dumplings per portion, which helps me to figure out when I am putting them into their meal prep dishes. And that's it. I also added a little bit of soy cream to this just to see what it would taste like. It was fine, doesn't need it though, and yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm just going to portion these things out now and put them in the freezer once they have cooled down. I ended up eating these for some lunches as well as some dinners. It's just so much easier when you're busy and you want to have a home-cooked meal. Yeah, honestly, I need to actually do this again. I've already eaten all of these meals. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And if you are interested, we are finally releasing some of the interviews I did with some fellow creators on Patreon, so I will leave those in the description below. That's going to be part of a much bigger video later on this month, but for now we are doing the individual interviews and they've got some really interesting things to say. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see more meal prep videos and I will see you very soon.